Many fear death as a tower block in West London is engulfed in flames. The death count has been downplayed by the mainstream media. They had no sprinkler system, no alarm system that worked, one way of getting up. Sadness has turned to anger. Tension spilling over into the street. We should be campaigning to the BBC, who has his mouthpieces for this corrupt government. Southeast Asia is a region rich for media watchers. Over the past few years here at The Listening Post, we've covered media stories from the Philippines, Myanmar, Thailand, and Malaysia. And this week, we're looking at Vietnam. Since the reunification of North and South in 1975, the Communist Party has ruled Vietnam, and the state's control over the news media is near absolute. However, Vietnam's bloggers are putting that control to the test. They've been challenging mainstream media outlets, pushing them to cover topics and issues the Communist Party has declared off-limits. Blogs, messaging apps and Facebook all carry stories that would otherwise have gone untold. The bloggers are finding a ready-made audience. There are more people online in Vietnam than any other country in Southeast Asia. And the bloggers have also attracted the attention and the ire of the authorities. Facing a mix of old laws and new ones, intimidation and closed trials, many have been disciplined, silenced and imprisoned. Last year alone, 18 bloggers and activists were jailed. The Listening Post's Minakshi Ravi now on the supine state of Vietnam's mainstream media and the government's attempts to silence the country's bloggers. Cuba, China, North Korea, Vietnam. The four surviving one-party communist states in the world. The Vietnamese media landscape is both similar to and distinct from those of its communist contemporaries. On one hand, there are numerous privately owned media outlets in Vietnam. On the other hand, however, the constitution mandates that all media be strictly controlled by the state, regardless of ownership, to quote, meet the people's demand for information, serving the cores of construction and defense of the fatherland. So how does the state control the media? Actually, there is no pre-publication censorship. Rather, we have a model of self-censorship. The editors-in-chief of all media outlets are members of the Communist Party and are appointed by the state governing body. They are responsible for content control. The Ministry of Information and Communications does give directions on what news should be delivered and how, but these are not rigid directions and sometimes media agencies can negotiate with the state. Because uh, mainstream media in Vietnam is monopolized by the state, um, independent bloggers play a very important role. They have, in recent years, pushed the boundaries of press freedom in ways that would just not be allowed by the state. It has, in the longer term, actually pushed the mainstream media to at least look into directions that they hadn't looked before. One such news story broke just over a year ago, in April 2016, a toxic waste spill that polluted a long stretch of Vietnam's coastline. The story was particularly problematic for the government in Hanoi. The spill had been caused by a Taiwanese steel plant that had been set up as part of a rapid industrial development push, one that many had warned was coming at huge environmental and human cost. It took a month of bloggers covering fish deaths and protests in the region before mainstream media picked up the news. Những ngày qua xảy ra tình trạng một lượng cá chết khổng lồ trôi dạt vào bờ biển các tỉnh Bắc Trung Bộ nước ta. Over the past decade, Vietnam has seen a dramatic increase in numbers of internet users. More than half of the country's 90 million people are online, many accessing the web through their phones, and one in three Vietnamese is on Facebook. Political blogging, however, is a dangerous activity. Wu Yen Van Hai was among the first bloggers in Vietnam. He wrote under the name Dio Kai, and soon after he began posting political content, he came under official scrutiny. After threats, intimidation, a show trial, and six years in jail, he was eventually expelled and now lives in exile in the United States. I started blogging around 2006, posting photos of my trips across Vietnam. During my travels, I saw a lot of poverty, corruption, and how local officials abused their power. So on my blog, I shared some of my political views with my friends. We discussed topics relevant to our country's problems. We also started discussing the idea of using blogs for journalism, as well as how to break the centralization of power in the state press. Wu Yen energized a growing legion of bloggers in Vietnam. 
We spoke with one of them via WhatsApp. We have not used her name here out of concern for her safety. She spoke to us about the impact Wu Yan had on her and other bloggers. He was known to the public mostly for being the founder and leader of the Free Journalist Club. And he was very brave, he was very vocal. The Free Journalist Club kept bloggers to get united and they began to publish news about uh, many controversial development projects in Vietnam. He was first arrested um, on trumped up tax evasion charges in 2008. Um, and held for, for four years, um, and right when he was going to be released, um, they threw new charges, anti-state charges at him. And uh, while in prison, he suffered extraordinary abuses. Now that he's been released, has been able to relate just exactly um, how uh, political prisoners are treated in Vietnam. Um, and it's, it, it's among the, the most abysmal in, in, in the region. The latest figures for bloggers behind bars comes from a 2015 study produced by the Washington-based National Endowment for Democracy. It lists 18 bloggers and online activists in jail. They include human rights blogger Tran Hoin Dwi Tuk, sentenced for 16 years on charges of conducting propaganda against the state. Also on the list was Wu Yen Hu Win, whose blog Ba Sam was one of the most popular in the country, with several million followers. He has been in prison since 2013 without trial. Since that 2015 study, other bloggers have been imprisoned. Wu Yen Nok Yu Coin wrote on social issues and was among those to write about last year's toxic waste spill. She was arrested eight months ago, accused of propagandizing against the state, and now awaits a trial the authorities are yet to set a date for. And just two months ago, another two bloggers, Huang Bin and Thuy Na, were also arrested. Vietnam's laws governing online media are numerous and vague. Control of the internet is tight, with access to many websites blocked behind what has come to be known as the bamboo firewall. Online content is closely monitored for postings on redline topics. The taboo topics are actually not that obvious. It depends on the timing and perceived impact of the topics. For example, back in 2012, a farmer shot and injured six policemen who had come to evict him from his land. Surprisingly, many mainstream outlets covered the incident. They even supported the farmer. How could the media do that? Well, it makes me think the authorities have a certain flexibility if they think a media dialogue can help promote issues of governance. Of course, I do see other cases. For instance, collective land disputes which could spark big protests against the government. In those cases, the media will be much more reserved. Sensitive issues according to the state include the treatment of detainees by the police. For example, when police beat people to death in police stations, these stories would be absolutely prohibited. Also, cases of coercion when the state is taking land from farmers and they protest. Such information could only reach the people through bloggers willing to write about such matters. Many of Vietnam's bloggers now write on Facebook, and the authorities have followed them there. The government switches access to the social media site on and off at will. In May this year, Facebook's head of global policy management met with Vietnam's Minister of Information and Communications. They reached an agreement for Facebook to coordinate with Vietnamese officials to limit, quote, illegal and offensive material. For Vietnam's bloggers, the net is tightening. The problem is that as independent bloggers had gained prominence, the state has struck back. And increasingly, um, where you probably had a much more vigorous blogging environment in say 2009, 2010, when the authorities were still a bit slow on the uptake, over the last six or seven years, right, there's been this vigorous campaign um, to harass, to surveil, and uh, in instances, jail some of these independent voices. You ask me about what it feels like to be a political blogger today, you know? And I must say that it's very interesting. You may feel a relief, you may feel happy, because you have a space. You say what you want to say, to write what you want to write. Also, and you will feel fear when you are chased by the police, when you are in the police station and you have to answer the questions they give to you. You will feel a chill in your backbone when they ask you, is this your Facebook account? And from that point, they will question you around many things, around your life, your family life, your even your love life, your business, and they will try to find some way to abuse you. 